begs the question, why will the West be so obsessed with promoting and branding a generation of Nigerian men as scammers and fraudsters? Here is one reason. The countries that have been so vested in pursuit of Nigerian men, in promoting and branding Nigerian men as scammers and fraudsters, are the countries that have exploited Africa's resources for centuries to build their economies. And, the, and they base this exploitation on the belief that they are mentally superior. Their brain power is stronger, so they can coin, mis, in, misinform, create systems to exploit Africa through misinformation. And the fact that you have a black man or a, a group of black men, few of them they might be, that are, are engaging in this same process of misinformation, which is wrong, and I say both sides are wrong, the fact that black men are engaging on this, as successful as the whites who've done it, enrages the whites who've justified their exploitation of Africa on the basis of their so-called mental superiority. Hello. How are you? Welcome to CUO, where we promote empowering information about Africa and Africans and correct the misrepresentation of Africa and Africans. We are still on the matter of how racial and racist profiling is driving efforts to brand Nigerian men as scammers. <laughs> yes, ridiculous definition of fraud in efforts to brand Nigerian men as fraudsters lives on. Efforts to brand Nigerian men as fraudsters have inspired new phrases, and you will be encountering some of these in this BBC article. It was published on Monday, July 13th, and titled, U.S. quote-unquote scam hostage freed after year in Nigeria hotel. The report goes like this, and I'm reading from it. An American woman lured to Nigeria by promise of marriage from a man she met on Facebook has been rescued after being held captive for more than a year, the police say. The 46-year-old woman was held, <laughs> was held in a hotel room in Lagos. And she was held against her will in a hotel room in Lagos. The suspect, Shukwebuka Obiako, who is 34, took control of the unnamed victim's credit and debit cards and retirement benefits, according to the police. Over a period of 15 months, she was forced to part with 48,000 US dollars. The victim is a retired civil servant from Washington, DC. Police say Mr. Obiako also used the victim as a front to defraud her associates and other foreign personalities and companies. The victim arrived from the US in February 2019, according to the Nigerian police, and married Mr. Obiako in May 2019. In total, the woman is said to have been held against her will for 16 months in a hotel room. The police say they received a tip-off from a civic-minded individual who informed them that led to their rescue, her rescue. Mr. Obiako has been arrested and police say he faces a charge of cyber crime. <laughs> and I'll stop reading. This is my effort. This is the effort that have been demonstrated here. This is how the definition of what fraud is has been stretched, bent, and adapted to further the racist profiling of Nigerian men. It is very creative and would be comical if not that it has such a, an impact on the future of Nigerian men. Okay. The woman was lured into Nigeria in February 2019 and married the Nigerian man in May. She was lured through Facebook on a promise of marriage. She came in February 2019 based on the promise of marriage and married this man in May the same year. But this article treats this as a minor information. In fact, it comes towards the end of the whole story, the story on this woman. So we don't know ahead of time that in these 16 months we're talking about they were together in a hotel room. They were married. And it says again that the Nigerian man took possession of the woman's debit and credit card. She didn't offer it. She didn't give it. He took possession of it. Every action here is instigated by the man. That's how you create, generate the Nigerian man as an active scammer. 
The woman's pension was stolen too. Whoa, I never knew it was that easy to access pensions. Why the woman was held, married to the man, by the way, for 16 months in a hotel room, she managed to communicate with the United States authorities to get access to her pension fund. I didn't know it was so easy to access pension fund. In none of those times did she let them know she was held captive. Now, in total, 48,000 US dollars was allegedly scammed off this woman from her husband over a period of 16 months. Now, let's look at the United States, for instance. Let's assume you met a man. You got married. You didn't have a job. So you were basically financing, you know, paying the bills for a year. Food, clothing, rent. How much will it come to? Healthcare, you know, the going out entertainment. Maybe would it come to less than 48000 a year? Women for rent, food, clothing, everything. This is how much this woman was scammed in a, uh, in a 16 month period. They were together. Oh, no, sorry. She was held captive in a hotel room in Lagos, a city of over 100 million people. She was held captive for 16 months. Her debit card was taken. The man took possession of it. She didn't offer it. She bought a ticket of $2,000 based on interaction with a Nigerian on Facebook, flew to Nigeria, got there in February, met this man, then the man married in May. I would assume they went to a court. She was forced to do that. Well, you know. <laughs> now, the effort to present this situation as a scam is ridiculous and an insult to the t intelligence of BBC readers. But in line with the United States effort to continue to justify racist treatment of Nigerian men in the justice system, majority of Nigerian men accused widely on alleged crimes relating to fraud and scams. It's just wild. You, you know, here's a 46-year-old woman, an American woman, lured <laughs> to Nigeria. He bought, she bought a ticket and was lured from the United States, from Washington to Lagos, flew overnight flight, you know, to, you know, lord there, met the man in February, married him in May, and was held captive in a hotel room in Lagos for 16 months. Her pension was as stolen as well. <laughs> you know, but in this effort, actually, to present Nigerian men as scammers, to bend the rules, stretch the definition of, um, yes, Americans are presenting themselves too in a very terrible light this woman has been in her effort to join into the narrative the language to brand nigerian men as scammers she's not looking good at all of course her name was not mentioned her photo was not displayed the nigerian man 34 year old man his, his future has been cut short his photo re revealed his name put out there but the woman is protected yet she bought a ticket flew to nigeria married a man she barely knew and Paid for the relationship, paid the bills for a year and a half. That came to 48,000 US dollars. If it was in the United States, it would have been a relationship gone sour. They met, married. It didn't go well as she expected. You get a divorce. You don't, you paid for the relationship. You funded it. The man had no job. You got that, you funded it. And when that happens, there's a divorce. But in the case of a Nigerian, it's a scam. I didn't get what I wanted. When we marry... We don't always get what we want. You marry a man in, on a promise. Maybe down the line you find out that he cheats. It doesn't go well. You get a divorce. But for the Nigerian man, it's a scam. <laughs> now, the news article goes further to defend and make a case on the prevalence, prevalence of online fraud in Nigeria with the below. Now, I'm reading directly from the article. Known as Yahoo Boys, Nigerian online fraudsters have become notorious for defrauding people of millions of dollars. Last month, police say they rescued a Filipino woman who came to Nigeria in search of romance after meeting a man on Facebook. She was held for six months against her will. Whoa, Nigerian men are really good. Eh? Women around the world just meeting them on Facebook are flying across around the world to meet them in Nigeria. Ah, oh, I did not know this before, that women around the world were flying to Nigeria based on how good Nigerians are, how charming, but don't know they're not charming, they're scammers. <laughs> so they scam women to come to Nigeria to 
to search, to search for romance. Nigeria has become the country of romance where women around the world fly to in search of romance. Oh, women who need romance, they go to Nigeria only to meet Nigerian scammers. Oh, how sad. This is what I think. I know. I travel the world. Nigerian men are famed around the world as men who shower their women with gifts, who provide economic privileges to their women, who prioritize ensuring their women are taken care of. They, they lavish their women with gifts. It's there in all the songs. I'm going to fly you around the world. Nigerian songs are popular around the world right now. I mean, most of the songs, Nigerian men are talking about how they're going to spoil their women, how they're going to shower their women with cars. They're going to wire money over to, to their women. They speak about a priority for Nigerian men, for women they love, is to take care of them financially. And that is an attraction for women around the world who are flying from Filipino now to search for romance. <laughs> and they are scammed and held against their will for six months. Now, this article, of course, has to make a reference to the, directly to the two recent high-profile arrests of Nigerian social media stars accused of large-scale fraud. And this ended with them being taken to the United States where they await trial. They await trial, they've not been tried, but they're famous everywhere now on allegations of fraud. Now, according to the article again, the Nigerian police have also announced three further arrests of alleged cyber fraud criminals with links to Italy and Turkey. These are suspected of selling <laughs> COVID-19 face masks. Police allege they made more than 400,000 from online fraud. So the total... The, the total number of cases from this article aimed at proving the alarming rate of Nigerian Niger men scamming in the world is six. In a country of 200 million people, the BBC article presents six cases to back up its claim of the threat of Nigerian men scamming in the world. Then the article went further to explain how sc Nigerian scams work. And I'm reading directly from the article again. It says, an individual may contact you via email explaining the need, the need, he, they're explaining he needs help to transfer money from Nigeria. This Nigerian man will tell you that political turmoil or natural disaster makes it difficult for him to make the transfer directly himself. So he will like, we will ask you to give him your financial details so that he will transfer the money into your account which will allow him to access and steal from your account. You know, and this, what, this allows him to access and steal from your account. So this is it. Let's break it down. You get, you're in the United States. You get an email saying, oh, I need to transfer some money from Nigeria, large sums of money, but, but, but I cannot do it directly myself due to disaster or turmoil. Could I transfer it to your account so that um, you can help me you know, they can't transfer the money directly anywhere else, but they can transfer it to your account. They can't do it themselves. Then you send your information to them, your financial information to them, and they use that information to steal from you. See how America, how this BBC article is trying so hard to present potential collaborators of scam as victims. This is what this is. Potential collaborators, those who are willing to provide the necessary resources to help steal money from Nigeria, have been presented as victims because they did not succeed. What happens to those that succeed? How many people succeed by prov providing their information to Nigerians? Financial information. Who would then use that to steal money from Nigeria? We don't hear of those. We hear of those who fail. Then the article goes further to warn innocent Americans. Be careful what you post on social media and get inside as scammers use the details for be to better understand and target you. Police, the efforts to brand Nigerian men as fraudsters will be comical, if, if not tragic, given its impact on Ni the Ni Nigeria's, Nigerian's image around the world. And this is racism and racial profiling. But you know the sad part of this is that Nigeria's current administration ran on both terms on the platform of fighting corruption. And with pressure from the United States, this current administration, the Nigerian administration, is trying to show that it, it is indeed fighting corruption. And one way it's doing it, the main way we know now, is through <laughs> profiling its young men, participating with wild, comical, ridiculous definition and allegations against Nigerian men as scammers. 
what this administration has not been able to do is to demand that the United States should extradite back to Nigeria those leaders, former politicians, those leaders, those former, former Nigerians who held public offices, who stole money into UK, into the United Kingdom, into the state. We know of them. They stole large sums of money. They are lodged in the state. They, yes, efforts have been made to get the money back, but they are still in the state. We know stuff that are still in the, in the UK, for instance. Why aren't those being extradited back to Nigeria to face trial? Why is the United States and UK so bent and enthusiastic about picking young Nigerian men, extraditing them with no clear basis, no strong foundation, but are willing to protect Nigerians that have held public offices, that have stolen large sums of money from Nigeria and ran to the States, ran to the West, they are protected there. They are protected there. We know of efforts by the UK to protect Umaro Diko, a Nigerian a former minister of finance who stole large sums of money, ran to the UK, Nigerians tried to extradite him to face trial and he was protected. In fact, the United Kingdom went extra mile to make sure he stayed, was protected in the UK. So this current administration should please stop participating, engaging in this ridiculous effort to, to have a wide, ridiculous, funny, laughable definition of what scam Niger the Nigerian scammers are. It's just a branding that is ridiculous, baseless, and just a distraction from what is being stolen from Nigeria. And I, like I always say, if a Nigerian participates in any scam, is found guilty in a court of law, is accorded and is given the full legal access to, to, to engage in a court of law and is found guilty, yes, he must face the required penalties. It's the same thing for others who participate and collaborate to steal from Nigeria. So anybody who comes forward to say I was scammed because I provided my financial information for Nigerian to transfer money, basically steal from Nigeria through my financial information, they should be paraded publicly. They should be humiliated like Nigerian men are being humiliated as well because they are criminals as well. They are only coming forward because they, were, they didn't succeed. Potential collaborators in robbing, stealing from Nigeria should not be presented by the United States as victims anymore. Thank you.